what are the problems that are going on in your life right now? And let's fix them. Let's talk about them. Let's figure out how to move through them. Today is day 76 of 100 Days of Surrender. It's the 15th of March. I just came in from taking Frankie for a walk, so I'm frozen. And fun fact, when I don't wear eyeliner, all my clients are like, oh, you look really tired. Are you okay? <laughs> no, it's just my face. <laughs> so there's that. Um, I want to talk about problems and what we can do about it and something that I've identified over the last 76 days about myself. Um, distraction is the question. What are we distracted by? I have had a day. I have had a doozy of a day. It's like nine o'clock right now, 9 p.m. I'm just wrapping up my day. And across the board, I am seeing it's been a lot of conversations about distraction. My viewpoint, distraction, focusing on problems, not solutions. And we all have challenges. We have all had some form of trauma or neglect or abuse or abandonment or even worse. I've been really transparent about my journey for what you need to know anyways, not all of it, but yeah. And it can consume us. And so the point that I'm really trying to make is, and then we're going to hash it all out. And again, I'm going unscripted, unplanned, haven't really processed shooting from the hip as always. So here we are in my vulnerability and I find I'm more vulnerable that way when I'm just raw. Um, and so here we go. Myself included. Okay. We, we've all had something and we all have a trauma response to something. Um, knowingly or unknowingly, I'm very aware of my trauma responses. And they're not nearly as exaggerate as they, I don't even think that's a word, exaggerate. Anyway, they're not nearly as um, uncontrolled as they were previously. So I'm very aware of when I'm feeling triggered and when I'm slipping into trauma response, anxiety, or anything that's not serving me. And something that I've become hyper aware of <laughs> over the last 76 days is how easy it is to become distracted by our challenges. And yes, we have challenges and yes, we need to work through our challenges. So I'm not disregarding those challenges. Also, can we just talk about this nipple I'm growing on my face for a second? Like what is happening? I keep looking at it. That's all I can see. Um, back to the point, my ADHD brain, right? So as you know, every day I've been writing a little love note or quote or message to myself and sticking it up on my inspiration wall. And I sat there looking at it this morning being like, okay, I think I want to relocate this somewhere where I'm going to spend more time with it or where it's more like, cause it's just in passing it's in my hallway. So that then led me to how consumed we become. So it was just a floating thought of, wow, we really get consumed by the hardships and not the things we've accomplished or the growth or the healing that we've done. Like our lens is, oh, let's get this fixed so that I can feel safe. Let's conquer this thing so that I can be more successful. Let's navigate and figure this out. That way I can just, it, things can get easy. And we put a lot of focus, especially in relationships, especially in sole purpose on what is wrong and desiring to feel ease or safety or security or Oh, thank God. Right. So I just want you to kind of self-evaluate with me here. Where are you expending unnecessary energy in an attempt to seek safety or manipulate the outcome? Often in one of the hardest lessons and one of the hardest energies to truly integrate and embody into yourself is trust. I learned that one the hard way as I do. I actually have this little note, hold on, my phone's on the charger, but let me bear with me. Here we go. Are, are you liking my chins? How's that? I'm down today. You hear me picking on myself? Shut up, dime, right? Okay. So 
this is what I want to say. I wrote this down today. I was really thinking and I was like, what's the fucking point? I've been going through a lot of what's the fucking point right now. I'm going to add to that in a minute. And then I was like, well, maybe my purpose is to do it messy. Maybe my purpose is to do it the hard way so that I can shorten the journey for others. And that's really what I've been doing is I do, I shorten the journey for others. And can you commit to doing it messy and figuring it out? And that's something that I, I am a full throttle kind of girl. Let me get really cozy in my seat. I've got my feet up. I am a fast track, full throttle kind of girl. And I get a lot of comments in and around, well, you've got to learn patience. Side note, in my human design, my astrology blueprint, my galactic blueprint, um, which I have a member on my team that does that shit. It's fucking cool. I've already learned patience in many lives and this life isn't about that for me. It is about going after it. It is about manifest. It is about understanding the science behind what I do, what I do for a living is what I was here to master in this life and trust, obviously. (laughs) So I know how to fast track shit because I did it the hard way and I get to shorten the gap in the journey. I get to shorten the healing journey. I get to shorten the awakening journey. I get to shorten the manifestation journey. I get to shorten the self-love journey for everybody that I work with because I know all the don'ts. Therefore, I understand the do's. And that is my purpose. That is what I was here to master. And it just so happens that I get to teach it. So that's beautiful, right? So it's not for me about oh, slow down and smell the roses. I do that anyways. That's my natural state. But it's more about what does it take for us to commit to looking through the proper lens? What does it take to commit to that? And I am a highly committed individual. Like you guys know how crazy I am that my my calendar, my executive assistant, Sherry laughs all the time. She's like, look at your fucking day. Like, holy Christ. And like, everything's in there from what time at meeting. And when she's working in home with me, she's like, oh, it's your lunchtime. Like, go get lunch. Like she keeps me on my schedule because she knows that's the only way I'm going to be as productive as I am. And so I'm not saying you guys have to do that by any means, but it's been a game changer for me, but it is, it's about commitment. I'm going to be teaching a course on this on the 27th and showing you how to commit to a relationship with wealth and actually become wealthy and how to commit to a relationship with your body and actually love your body and how to commit to a relationship with love and how to commit to a relationship with health and prosperity. I'm teaching that on 27th. I'm fucking stoked about it. And again, I did the messy route so that you don't have to. And so today has been a day of looking at my clients the energy, not all of them today, but a good chunk of them. And even myself a little bit, I'm like, oh, I'm getting distracted. I'm becoming distracted by the challenges, the desire for better. More than I am looking through the lens of my 30-year-old self would would murder probably, (laughs) not really, but my 30 year old self would do anything to be in this seat that I'm sitting in right now. And so it's interesting on, and I'm gonna share a couple of tools with this off the top of my head. Um, It is interesting. So this is self-evaluation day. It's day 76 of hundred days and my life has changed so drastically. My body has lost 20 pounds. Um, in all of the spots that it doesn't need to. So that's fun. Um, isn't that great how that works? And so I've lost 20 pounds in 76 days. I have increased my financial status by four, like times four. I have sold out everything that I've offered in the last 76 days. I have changed my entire life structure, my routine, and I feel way more fulfilled way more fulfilled than I did on my birthday video, which was December 21st, where I was fucking done, man, I was depleted. And I went and watched that video the other night. And I was like, I knew I'd cringe. And I said that from the start. I'm like, I'm gonna look back on these and cringe. Um, and I did, I was like, Ooh, girl, 
but I'm a different woman now and I'm living a very different reality now, but I'm slipping or have been slipping mildly, mildly into looking at the challenges in my life and trying to figure out what do I need to do to fix this right away so that I can feel safe. And some of these challenges are not in my control. Um, There are other people impacting it, right? So what lens are you looking through? That is a question that I am going to be putting on my wall tonight before I go to bed. Look through the right lens. Be proud. Own your growth, your success. It's evolution. It's always going to happen. You can't stop a tree from growing if you're nurturing it. So just continue to nurture it. You can't, like, that's an analogy that I always go to is trees. So as long as I'm nurturing it, it will grow. I just have to nurture the roots, the foundation, the inner being. And it will grow because as above, so below. So what lens are we looking through? What are we doing with that? Are we going into panic? Are we going into trauma response? Are we unknowingly seeking, pushing, um, manipulating, I'll use that word, unknowingly, the individuals or the circumstances in our life in order to get or attain what we perceive as our desired safety line. So that's really fascinating for me. Um, I'm like, hmm. And it was a conversation that I had with a real heavy, heavy conversation that I had today with one of my girls um, where I was watching her. And at the same time as I'm offering all of this wisdom that I have, I'm like, am I, am I, am I fully, fully invested into the right lens right now? So beautiful thought, right? So let's talk about how do we look through the right lens? I am a huge fan of setting yourself up for success. There's a couple of key factors and there's something that um, I have held very dear to my heart and I'm very aware of. And so I'm going to share this massive tidbit with you. Okay. So we see posts. It's how we fix problems. It's how we manifest. We see posts in and around. Keep your, your love life private, your financial private, do it and then show up, right? Just arrive, already done. Don't share it. And there's a reason for that. So you have to think about what you're co-manifesting with. The moment you put information into the world, people are attaching to it and adding to it. So I'm going to share a very vulnerable experience of mine when I was heavy, heavy in self-victimization mode, because I'm so good at that. Oh my God. I like, I should have a trophy. (laughs) I should have an award for the best, um, like top notch self-victimization trophy is like, that should be on my shelf somewhere. I don't do it anymore. I recognized it, but rewind a few years ago when I got really unwell and I was experiencing, um, navigating through cancer, navigating through a really bizarre condition called mastocytosis. Um, I was given eight weeks to live. I was walking with a cane. Some days I wasn't walking at all. And so what did I do? Oh yeah, Facebook status. Pictures of my cane being like, at least it's leopard print. I'm trying to navigate this. I'm going to beat it. Or we see fuck cancer. Or we see, um, I'm feeling so down and out today. Send me love. Or like, oh, I was all over it. I was all over it. And what happens when we do that? I really want you to think about this. And for some of you that you're not going to understand what I'm saying, and this might trigger you. And for some of you, you might go, oh, so take whatever resonates. Okay. I'm not saying I'm always right. I don't know everything. I'm 44. I've got lots of years left of learning to do, but here's what I know right now. And why I will never go online and talk about a headache or a back pain or the condition that my body loves to experience or how my ego loves anxiety. I talk about it here, but I'm never going to share those moments into public energy. I share the only goal I share. I don't share financial goals. It's very rare that I talk about my finances. Um, We've talked about that in another video. The only goal I share is changing a million lives. So co-manifestation happens, whether we know it or not your relationship, your loving relationship, you are co-manifesting the outcome. We manifest from our belief structure in the subconscious. So if you have trauma, you're manifesting from that trauma. 
and you're going to have challenges. You're going to have disagreements or disconnects. If you are putting posts like I did on social media in regards to walking with a cane and all the pain I was going through, here's the point. People were commenting and being like, you've got this. We love you. You're going to be great. You're doing great. But what were they really sending me? Okay, so we think, and you're going to convince yourself that this is correct, sending love because we care. What we're really sending is the fear of you not being okay. Because our automatic response is, if you care for someone, like, oh my gosh, like, I don't, they have to be okay. So we're actually adding fear to the equation. I mean, I'm not breaking that down properly. I've had a long day and I wish I could articulate this a little bit better but we're sending our discomfort over their discomfort. And some of you right now are going to be like, no, that's not true. I'm sending love. Like I send Reiki and I send all these things. What you're doing is acknowledging the pain and discomfort. So I was acknowledging my pain and discomfort. Universal flow does not understand choice. It understands focus. Your vibration will vibrate to whatever it is you are focusing on, not what you are choosing in your head to focus on. So I was focused on my disharmony, my cane, the challenge. I'm going to conquer it. This is what I'm going through. It's so challenging. It's so hard, but I know I've got this. The underlying tone was I was putting the focus on the thing that I did not desire, putting it out into the world, Facebook status update and receiving other people focusing on it with me. And it took a real long time for me to figure that out. So instead, what does it matter? If you have healers in your life that you trust, reach out to them and be like, show me some energy right now. What can I do for you? Make it an exchange. Show me some energy right now. What are you going through? What can I do for you? And by that, what you're focusing on is a union and exchange of positive energy. Do you get what I'm saying? I really hope that's coming across right. So when we're focusing on our problems, are we getting caught up in the challenge of the problem, the why of the problem, the desire for the problem to change? Or are we focusing instead on this is the solution? Are we committing to the solution and how far we've come and the truth that you truly have navigated through every fucking thing that has been handed to you up until here and now, you're still alive. You still have internet if you're watching this. You're still alive. You're still thriving to some degree. You're surviving maybe, but you're still going. And so you've made it through all of your challenges to here. And maybe you didn't feel like it going through it. And I know I didn't feel like it going through mine. but here you are. How far have you grown? How far have you come to terms with acknowledging that you want to love yourself and you want to heal your inner child? How far have you come with the truth? <laughs> All the misconceptions in our society structures. How far have you come? If you're looking through that lens, universal flow that's moving through you, that you are universal flow, is knowing your focus and is going to, that's your vibration. The universal law of vibration, your vibration, because you're an energetic being, whatever you're putting your focus on, the law of attraction, boom, is responding to that. Right? So I had a couple of days of not my, not feeling the greatest. And I know the energy is so messed up this week. Like up until the new moon, the energy is gross. Um heads up Friday, Saturday night are really heightened nights for emotions being on the surface, which could cause miscommunication, disagreements. Don't go having deep conversations Friday, Saturday at all. Not until like Sunday night does that energy lift a little bit. So just a heads up on that one. Um, I break down all the energy, which is kind of like cool for me. Um, I do a, I do an energetic read and how to navigate the energy of every day and every night in a membership called coffee chats. And so I get a little preview. And so I literally take that preview and then 
schedule my life around those energies. And to be forewarned is to be forearmed or to understand that sometimes it's not us. Sometimes it is the energy. Sometimes it's the energy of the collective to know, to not put yourself into a challenging situation where you can't fully, truly communicate and get the point across or receive to know these things in advance is super important. Um, so I know that this week is very heavy and I know that a lot of the energy I'm holding or experiencing moving through me, I'm not holding on to anything that is moving through me is not all mine, but it's adding to mine. So today was that day where I was like, what's my focus right now? Am I focusing on challenge or how far I've come? Because that's what's going to change it. And it sounds so simplistic, but I promise you, game changer. Because you are an energetic being. There's universal laws that are all navigated off of energy. And that is how the quantum realm works. So yeah, there's that. Yeah, let's just end there. I don't want to drag it on too long for you. I love you. Thank you for all of the comments. Oh my God, my heart is just overwhelmed. Thank you so much. And I've seen this video shared or the last few videos really shared. So you're making a girl's heart continue to believe in her purpose on this planet. So thank you very much because we all love a little bit of confirmation, right? All right. Have an amazing evening and I will see you tomorrow. Bye guys.